In this short video, I want to show you how to use the export tool to create content in other formats from your TriCaster system. So on the interface in the uh, upper middle, you'll find an export option with a gear next to it. If you click on the gear, a drop down appears with the following options. The export media tool itself, presets that you've created. By default, you'll have one preset when you first come in here, and then a new presets option and when you open this, there'll be a bunch of additional uh, subcategories of presets you can create. The one I'm going to focus on is the transcode preset, but these other ones will allow you to send clips uh, to these specific destinations. So let's start with transcode. In the window that opens up, you can give this preset a name. Uh, for our example here, let's say we're going to do an H.264 uh, 10 megabit export is what our plan is. I also like to put the path as to where this file will be going uh, in the name as well. You don't have to do that, but I think it makes it easier to, to work with these presets. Then you choose the format that you want to export as, and the default in a transcode is a same as source. This will be a file copy effectively. There will be no conversion. So if you just want to move files around, this could be a good way to go. But if you click on this, in the drop down list are all the different formats you can convert into. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to just hit on a few of the big ones. In QuickTime, you can choose different codecs, the big one in here being ProRes. So this is a good format if you need to convert files uh, into a format for nonlinear editors uh, to work with. There is also uh, MXF. Uh, some playout systems will use this, and there's different resolutions you can choose in here. The MXF encoding is going to be an MPEG-2 format inside the MX MXF file. And then uh, there's also uh, the M4V. This would be an H.264 MPEG-4 type file. That's one I'm going to use. But you can see there's others in the list that you can uh, play around with, uh, including MP3 being another one if you just need an audio-only export. So I'm going to choose the H.264. I'm going to choose the 10 megabit. And then you choose where these files are going to go. Uh, I'm going to change this to my uh, network drive here. There we go. And then leave the publish, just leave it on clips and stills. Lastly, you can also set up a watermark. This will allow you to overlay a uh, logo or bug on top of the image. It needs to be an alpha channel graphic uh, if you want to do that. But we're, we're not going to put any of that on, so we'll hit OK. Now when you've done that, you'll see that this new entry appears in the list. And when you first add media into the export tool, whatever options are checked in here will automatically get applied to this export setting. And you can have a clip exported with multiple settings simultaneously. So uh, I just want to do my H.264 export here. So I'm going to have only that one checked and then go to the export media tool. And now we can load in the media and export it out. So I'm going to hit add. Go find a clip. Let's use the uh, the monorail shot here. I could load in multiple clips if I wanted to. Over on the side here, you can choose the different destinations you've set up in here, and you could even set up different ones for different uh, clips in the here. And when you're ready, you can hit export, and this will start converting that file and saving it off uh, into that directory. And so now if we want to go look, I can go hit the plus button in here, uh, browse my way to that location. You can see there's my monorail M4V shot. I could load that in, and there it is as a clip uh, that plays back inside the system or use it wherever it needs to go. And hopefully that will give you a good idea of how to use the export tool.